Every living creature in this world lives with varying needs to survive. Humans have a broader scope of demands compared to some species that can live with very few resources. Yet we have a common denominator with them regarding the requirement of H2O, oxygen, and many other chemical compound related things available in the periodic table and the world of science. We need more oversupply of those necessities to impact our daily lives. That is why balance is important, like what the Chinese yin yang represents, because it helps us live more peacefully and in better health at all times. The same thing applies to your fish's needs to survive. Yeah, you heard it right. Our lovely fish pets need to have a balance when it comes to everything, from their choice of food, modified and natural habitat, tank mates, and much more. But today, we'll be talking mainly about what you need to know when it comes to lowering the pH level in the aquarium using seven effective methods that I will discuss as we go on with the topic. So, stay with me until the end of this video to fully understand what you should do to give your fish pets the environment they need that is safe and healthy. All of that will be served only here at Aquarium Store Depot. It's critical to keep the pH level of water stable if you keep fish in an aquarium. pH is one of the most crucial variables in a fish tank setting and a routine water quality investigation. Which species in aquatic life survive in any given habitat is directly influenced by the pH of the water. Just by that information alone, it's obvious how helpful or detrimental the pH level is for your fish. Understanding pH measurement is essential to comprehending why pH is so significant. Try to take a look at this pH scale on your screen. On a range from 0.0, .0 to 14.0, pH measures how acidic or basic a solution is on a logarithmic scale. 7.0 is considered a neutral pH between these two values, with pH values below this being acidic and above this being basic. Quick or unexpected changes in the pH of water can be fatal for many aquatic organisms. Despite this, pH varies throughout the day due to natural processes. It's also crucial for us fish keepers to be familiar with what might influence the changes in pH levels in the natural ecosystem where our lovely pets come from. You know what they say, the root of all this happening to you right now can be traced back to your past. Uh, excuse me, but I need clarification on why we have to focus on a natural ecosystem instead of narrowing it down to the aquarium setting where our fish pets live. Ah, thank you for letting me hear that question in your mind. Well, the pH of water, particularly salt water, is influenced by various natural processes. The science underlying these natural elements has been adapted to aquarium filtration and media to take pH adjustment easier for fish keeping enthusiasts even if they don't have as much of an impact in a small and enclosed fish tank setting. Now that I've answered the question echoing in your mind, allow me to go on with the factors that affect pH in natural ecosystems. First, it might be due to the existence of carbon dioxide. One of the critical factors affecting the pH of freshwater, saltwater, and brackish water systems is carbon dioxide. In other words, the pH decreases directly with the amount of carbon dioxide in the water. By causing surface agitation, carbon dioxide and salt water mix to generate carbonic acid, or H2CO3, eventually breaking into hydrogen and bicarbonate ions. These hydrogen ions immediately lower the pH, making the water more acidic. The pH of freshwater habitats ultimately begins to vary due to this shift in ocean pH as water moves through the environment. Dissolved organic carbon, which takes the form of decomposition and respiration, has an even higher impact on the pH of freshwater. Second, our decomposition and respiration. Rainwater and runoff from the nearby ground and tributaries feed freshwater lakes, streams, and ponds. Plants, animals, pollution, and other contaminants transported by the river along this course are finally deposited. The pH will be impacted if these things are organic and begin to disintegrate. Carbon dioxide is emitted during the breakdown process. As a result, there is a direct supply of hydrogen ions, which lowers pH. Respiration is another direct source of carbon dioxide. In a freshwater aquarium, most species including fish, invertebrates, and plants respire. The pH in your aquarium changes throughout the day because of respiration and because plants only photosynthesize in the presence of light. Respiration occurs continuously day and night. It's just more noticeable at night owing to increasing carbon dioxide levels and associated variations in pH. Third, tannins follow the same patterns as the breakdown. An astringent substance called tannins is naturally present in a wide range of plants and trees in both terrestrial and aquatic habitats. 
Hobbyists have successfully used tanning compounds in their freshwater fish tanks since they benefit these environments. Many plants and trees have tannins in their bark and leaves to naturally ward off bacterial and fungal diseases. Tannins enter the system as these organics break down in the water, giving fish and other invertebrates more robust defenses against pathogens. Tannic acid, the weak acid that changes the pH, makes up some of these molecules, and once it gets into the water, the pH level starts to drop. Alright, that's a lot of scientific explanation there. I hope your brain cells are still capturing information. Before we continue with the 7 methods you can try to lower your tank's pH level, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our YouTube channel for a regular update on the fish keeping hobby. The aquarium topic on your mind may be our next topic of discussion. Returning to our video, it might be challenging to lower the pH. Because this number is logarithmic, even a slight shift may be too much for fish and invertebrates to take all at once. It is important to give animals enough time to adjust to new conditions if pH levels are being changed. Furthermore, it's crucial to remember that pH levels will only alter once KH is within the acceptable range. Now that you're here, let's talk about the 7 ways to lower your tank's pH level. First on the list is acquiring aquarium driftwood. Driftwood is very likely to be added during the construction of a freshwater aquarium for both aesthetics and structure. Driftwood in a nutshell is any wood that is washed ashore on the banks of a river, lake, pond, or beach. Using common species like mopani, spider, and manzanita wood, aquarium hobbyists have mastered the technique of driftwood aquascaping. Yet driftwood enhances the aquarium in far more ways than merely aquascaping. Remember that most trees contain tannins and tannic acid. Driftwood is no different, and most species will leak tannins into the aquarium water. Fish and invertebrates are more resistant due to the darkened water, reduced pH, and altered pH. So it stands to reason that the pH will decrease the more driftwood produces tannic acid. Second is the presence of Indian almond leaves. The Terminalia catapa tree is the source of these dried leaves. Indian almond leaves, like driftwood, contain tannins that break down and release into the aquarium water. Indian almond leaves not only lower the pH level and provide health advantages, but also cover the bottom of the tank well with leaf litter. Several species will enjoy hiding beneath a thick leaf litter and hunting for food. Indian almond leaves are among the most common dried leaf varieties. However, other plants can have the same benefits. Every three months or so, these leaves will need to be replaced. The third option is the use of peat moss. The Sphagnum genus, a collection of mosses frequently seen growing around bog habitats, is commonly referred to as peat moss. Peat moss lowers the tank's pH by releasing tannins like driftwood and Indian almond leaves. But employing peat moss is a lot easier to manage than the first two possibilities. Peat moss can be precisely dosed, which is one advantage of utilizing it in the fish tank. While some hobbyists integrate peat moss directly into their substrates, many place a bag in their filter. Another choice is to produce fresh tank water that has been peat moss treated prior. But be nature friendly fish keepers and harvest peat moss in just the right amount. Fourth is CO2 injection. Similar to atmospheric carbon dioxide entering an ocean or lake, but on a much smaller and more controlled scale, CO2 injection lowers pH by raising the concentration of hydrogen ions in the tank water. Due to the control that comes with administering carbon dioxide, this is a fantastic way to reduce the pH in fish tanks especially those containing aquatic plants. A CO2 setup can be used and is more advanced than basic fish keeping. They are ideal to use in planted tanks. This fifth method might be standard, but changing your water would be awesome. Your fish tank's pH may gradually drop if you have a high bio load and neglect routine maintenance. This is because organic materials are broken down during respiration and decomposition, producing carbon dioxide and acidifying water. Similarly, Water changes will assist in lowering pH by removing carbon dioxide from the water and replacing it with fresh oxygen. Since we're talking about H2O, our sixth method would be replacing your source of water. Switching your aquarium's water supply is the best and most durable way to get the ideal pH level. For convenience and to add minerals, many freshwater aquariums use tap water. Yet, tap water's pH levels might change daily depending on the factors impacting the source water. Reverse osmosis water should be used and remineralized to the preferences of the enthusiast for maximum control over aquarium pH and overall water quality. Moreover, fertilization and plant development may now be significantly controlled. And finally, the last method on our list is the usage of chemical solutions. Any aquarium issue should only be solved chemically as a last resort. 
particularly something as sensitive as pH. Chemical remedies can be pricey, challenging to dose, and most significantly, ineffective in addressing the issue's root. pH levels will gradually return to normal when chemicals have ceased being administered. To appropriately raise or lower pH and KH, several neutralizers, reducers, and buffers have been tested in aquariums. A balanced or proper pH level is essential to keeping your tank and fish healthy. The pH of most freshwater aquariums hovers around 7.0 on average. 6.5 to 7.5 is a range that most fish can tolerate. However, species can influence this. Where the water was collected affects the pH of the source water. If tap water is utilized, the hobbyist must ensure the pH levels are suitable for fish tanks. Certain local reservoirs are naturally more acidic or alkaline than others and are vulnerable to change. If you suddenly think of rocks, you don't have to worry because most rocks won't change the pH of a freshwater aquarium. Yet calcium carbonate, which is naturally bare and will raise pH levels, makes up the majority of limestone containing rocks. Even while specific limestone gravel may momentarily boost or drop pH levels after being introduced, limestone gravel can begin to alter pH in the same way. As long as the circumstances are ideal, pH may be changed quickly in a fish tank setup, and you shouldn't be bothered at all because, well, you have us. If you want to know more about pH levels and other related matters, visit our website at AquariumStoreDepot.com, where plenty of blog posts are free to read and share with your fellow fish keepers. This video taught you how to maintain a balanced pH level in your tank. If you liked it, it would be awesome if you liked the video, shared with friends, and subscribed to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching, fish keepers, and we'll see you on our next topic.